So we just <laughs> recorded an episode about Hyman Bloom with Zach Padley, who just had to leave because he had a pee and lost his keys. Yeah. So in, to uh, Reggie decided to go piss in his garbage can because yeah. Zach took up the whole bathroom. But yeah, here. we did a, a good episode on Hyman Bloom. Hyman yeah, it was Bloom. Good. I, mean, I learned a little. I'm a little did sauced you learn right a now, but yeah, I learned just, a lot. Just a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. A little yeah, sauce. I'm a little, a little sauced right now, so I don't know how great it turned out, but we'll watch it later when we're sober and figure it, it out. It'll be fun. Yeah. We're going to have a good, time. It, a good time. This one seemed a little more serious. Yeah. It wasn't as uh, off the rails as we get when Christina's hosting because the three of us were drinking too much. Yeah. It was but a yeah. fun time, though. He great. has some great artwork. I can't wait to show it to everybody because he's not a very well-known artist. He wasn't. And you'll find out why when we uh, delve into this podcast here. Yeah, so uh, enjoy this show. But before we do, let's go ahead and uh, plug our plug uh, our Instagrams and everything. Yeah, because oh, we didn't we forget to shit our plugs. at all. Yeah. Yes, I am uh, Josh Ruff at joshruff.com and all the things, www.joshruff.com. And Mighty. we're filming at RS Tattoo NY, Renaissance Studios right now. My name is Reggie Cavalier. You can find me at Reggie Inks on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'm Ben Maslar. I'm a painter and co-owner of Crucible Gallery. You can find us at Crucible Gallery on Instagram. My Instagram is at Bam underscore Maslar, uh, www.crucibleartgallery.com. And uh, we enjoyed hanging out with Zach Pedley from the North Brewery at North Brewery on Instagram. At, at the, the, at the, the North, North Brewery. Brewery. Yeah, yeah. At the North Brewery. I'm a fuck the up. No, dude. Brewery. Is that Stephen Russell Black show still going on? It is. By the time we for, post this. Yep. It'll be going on until about mid April. Awesome. So. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Check all that shit out, guys. Enjoy. Bye. I didn't go to Boston. <laughs> Hi everyone. Nobody hey, everybody, here is we're back. Nobody here How's is sick. Going? We don't have the coronavirus. We're all fine. Yeah. As far as I know. We're alive. Uh, um, yeah, my bad. All right, so here Zach Pedley is joining us again. I'm I'm happy to be here again. This awesome. is awesome. Thank you guys. Yeah. I'm much very much appreciative. Your headset well, looks thank like you. it's going to fall off. We appreciate off. you. Hey, all right. Yes. Hey, hey, our sponsor. Yes. The boys. Zach makes beer. So we do make beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about EBF since uh, that's yeah. happened since so the last time you were here. EBF stands for Extreme Beer Fest, right? So we went up to Boston, invite only, 32 breweries. We were 32 breweries in, this, in the country. We're lucky enough to be one of the 32 again for the uh, fifth time in a row. Nice. So it's huge. And every time we go to Boston, it's a great, great event. Uh, can't say anything more than it. it's just very fun and great. So when we're not at the festival, we try to do other things around Boston. And uh, we ended up going to what? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, ended up, we ended up going to the uh, Boston Museum of Fine Arts. What is wrong? Your, your headset I looks think like your it's going to fall off. Hilarious. It's not going to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. I promise you it's not. All right, cool. All right. Let's I, keep it professional. I guys. have a very big head. <laughs> all right. So so we go to the uh, Boston Museum of Fine Arts. Uh, we take Matt Bergman with us. Ooh. So that's a fun experience. And my wife, she she tags along. So it's the three of us going there waiting. We were, we were just trying to buy time so we can go get ramen. And uh, we get there. And they're offering uh, season year long passes for twenty five bucks, and the entrance fee to get into the museum is twenty five bucks. So we decided to do the twenty five dollars uh, for the for the year. So if if we ever go back up there this year, you guys go up there. We'll go up there together. I got the passes for at least three of us. Let's take this on the road. We should. We yeah. should. Yeah, that'd be real real fun for a, a day a weekend. Go so to we go Boston for a day. Like, well, it's like well, seven hours. Well, it's four hours to get there. I'm saying we go there. We would drive up. Maybe Saturday morning, oh, we'd leave okay. late Sunday, or we would drive up Friday and then leave Sunday type of thing. Okay. Two museums up there. There's the Contemporary Art Museum, which I know that uh, one person in this room does not like. <laughs> I'd go anyway. <laughs> Come on. It'd be sweet. You could see all the interactive things that are up there. 
That's the one we wanted to go to because of all the uh, exhibits up there are, are, are just BS. That, yeah, fun. that's the one you were talking about with like the room that's two foot yeah, high, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's just exhibits like that and they're way, they're priced out, out of control. But then we decided, hey, because that, that place wasn't open at the time that we were free, so we went to the Museum of Fine Arts. And this place is massive. We're talking four floors. Uh, the basement level is all restaurants. Uh, there's a cafe on the first floor and then surrounding exhibits. And there's an, um, an eastern wing, a, a uh, uh, American wing. There's an Asian wing. It's, it's crazy how much art is in this facility. But we were blown away when we went in because they were said, oh, yeah, we have a Pollock exhibit that's going to go away in a couple of days. And then we also have a Hyman Bloom exhibit. And I've never heard of Hyman Bloom before. I was like, this is cool. So let's go check out Pollock because we talked about him. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go check out his work. So we went in there and they only had two massive pieces that we were up there uh, looking at. And there was other small pieces that he had, but they were just massive that we were looking at. And then we went into the Hyman Bloom sec sector and uh, was pretty blown away by his art. Yeah. It's cool. And that's who we're here to talk about today is uh, Hyman Bloom. Good segue there, guys. Yeah, you yeah. basically discovered this guy for us and uh, showed <clears throat> us some of his work, and it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's pretty fucking sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I was up there, I was actually texting these two assholes. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> everything. And Bam's like, "Are you just are you running through this 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 exhibit? What are you doing?" And I was like, "These are just photos I took Look when I was there." Well, it was like Walk every to the lab. Well, every like Walk thirty the seconds, I was getting Walk another to the text. <laughs> Yeah, no, like I was every just, 30 seconds. So I'm like, are you literally just walking through? Just <laughs> I, mean, I, like gonna, that, you, I like that. I yeah. like that. Are you going to stop and actually look at this shit? Or? No, we we went through it. Uh, we we definitely stopped and looked at everything. This was just when I was texting you. It was like we were after we were leaving. We left the one exhibit, sent you all the photos, left another exhibit, sent you all the photos. Uh, but yeah, so cool. we're here to talk about Hyman Bloom. Yeah. Bloom and Hyman. You did some research on this guy, didn't you, Bam? Yeah, I did. A little bit. Okay. Hyman so Bloom was born in 1913. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Zach, new drinking game. He was born. I don't think Zach is uh, up to date oh, on the rules like of the, the game. Would you here. like to hear the rules for the drinking game? No, yes. we'll just drink. No, um, well, oh, no. There's there's a there's like 13 there's rules okay. that Reggie came up Here we with. Go. Basically, so. the main gist is, did things happen during this artist's life? Like, for instance, were they born? Was there death of a loved one? Were they not accepted to art school? Did they fail and or drop out of art school? It was there cre creepy bedroom stuffs. Ooh. Bedroom stuff is defined as uh, Sex. underage or Ooh. somebody you're related to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, career shift later in life. Other miscellaneous tragedies. Mental illness slash crazy. Any obs any scandals? Obscure during life, but famous after or raised poor. What if they were like bedroom stuff and it's just like not the normal bedroom stuff? Like, like BDSM or some shit. No, like, like that. what if they were like, "Oh, we're into orgies." Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll not too, but it, I, like, let's add in one other factor. I don't like, know. I, I like to like have a series basic. of orgies, but only with clowns. I feel like that's okay. just pretty basic in twenty twenty now. Yeah, in twenty twenty, but mean, not in nineteen forty. Well, right, true, I'll still drink true. to it though. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, Hyman Bloom was born. It was born nineteen thirteen. Uh, I think we already cheers. drank to this. Yeah, we already drank to that. But he was in Latveria. Mm, yes. Or Latvia. 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 I got Dr. Doom on the brain, man. <laughs> Victor Von Doom, Hyman Bloom. I've been confusing up these facts all the time. Nice. Let's see. Uh, move to America to fight Ni Mr. Fantastic. Shit, I did it again. <laughs> Hold on. All right. Nope. He um, moved to America in 1920. Yep. Moved to Boston. Yeah. Um, where he spent uh, predominantly most of his life was in the his, Boston area. Yeah. yeah. His family Until, like, fled war torn later. Latvia, right? That's why yeah. they moved to Boston. Yep. Jewish he, persecution and all the crazy early stuff. Early childhood that. trauma. Yep. <laughs> Got a drink. Langa bango. Get it out the way now. And you wonder why we get so drunk on these things. It's because Zach gives us all this quality beer from the North. From brewery. the North <laughs> Brewery. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So uh, I guess uh, he was there. Did you find any other good early stuff? Did you see anything interesting about his early life? There really wasn't much because he didn't start actually drawing until he was in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Because up until that point, he was actually studying to be a rabbi. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And but yeah, he, was he was a golden boy. Yeah, he was a good boy. He was trying to find somebody to like actually take him in. Define like, good boy. Well, he, he wanted to be a fucking rabbi. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. he was trying to find somebody to bring him into like uh, I don't know what it would be called, like seminary school type thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because you need like a mentor. Through exactly, that. you yeah. have to have somebody. So he couldn't find anybody to to do that, and so he was like drawing in eighth grade. So he did the next best thing, which is art school. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then so then the following year when he was uh, his teacher saw his work, and I guess they 
I'm, I think they submitted his work for him or yeah. something. Uh, but he got accepted as like a special uh, high school that was mainly for art. Yeah, students. I saw a couple of things about that. Like he was doing a lot of extracurricular art activities and stuff. Like there was a lot of community schools that he was attending, as well as the where you saw his artwork. The MFA had like a school yeah. for like gifted kids. Yeah, yeah. Where it was like after hours from normal high school stuff. And yeah, yeah. there were yeah. these yeah. two teachers. I forget their names, but like they were part of that school and like noticed that he was kind of uh, like this whole curriculum is built around him and like a few other students basically pretty yeah. much yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah to explore like this uh, mary cullen that's it yep mary cullen yeah so then eventually didn't a uh, professor from harvard start to like tutor him more hands-on more yep. like one-on-one yeah if you go to his w- wikipedia here it says Denman that he graduated Ross, from harvard right? yep went to harvard yeah, Harvard University. See, I, I, when we talked about it, like you went to high school too, like there was like a more art centered high school. Why don't they do that anymore? Like, I think that's really um, like a big thing that we're not doing anymore for like personalized schools for different like different categories, money. like M- tech money, schools kind of thing. Yeah, like but more art focused. Yeah, we don't have that type of stuff anymore. I mean, there's, there's a few art institutes around here, but like. There's not a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. like a 14, 15, yeah, 16. Yeah, yeah. More like preteen to teen yeah. years. When, like when I feel really like the that's like the most important years. You know what I mean? Because sure. it's, it's not even about learning how to draw at that point. It's also just learning the to sit down and actually draw for three hours a day. Oh, the discipline. Hours, you know, yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. more the about that. Self-control to you, sit and focus. You know what I mean? Like I had art school or I took art classes in, in high school, but I don't feel like I got anything out of it like there wasn't discipline behind it there no wasn't it was like always a, a secondary thing it's yeah. all about the region yeah it's, it's like an elective English. course yeah, exactly mostly. and mm-hmm. if you're a student that's just not accustomed to uh the traditional schooling you're not going to be able to take those courses they won't let you take those courses uh-huh. that's yeah. what really sucks so you get these kids like i teach over at lws and you get these kids that are in my class that are actually really really good and talented at what they're doing but they're just the regular public school system is failing them because they can't adhere to the the standards that they want. But if they were in exactly. an alternative school like that, they thrive. Exactly. So, I mean, we're yeah. off on a tangent. I just, I, I'm sorry to do that, but um, no, it's fine. It no. no, 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 no. Yeah, makes, I, makes I actually sense. found that kind of interesting while I was reading that stuff, too. It's like um, just kind of that give and take of the modern age. Like we feel like we have a- access to so much information with our like the Internet being there. But to read about these kids who had mentors in their middle school years to like actually be a fine artist you know somebody sitting down and teaching you how to draw from life it's yeah, well, really it, interesting it, yeah. you look at that i mean from his graduating when his class i mean going forward we will talk about later with pollock and de kooning and uh the other guys from that that era i mean they all had mentors too and then they all were very mm-hmm. successful for what they were what they were yeah, what they yeah. wanted to achieve yeah but had mm-hmm. i had i had something like that in high school i feel like i would have been uh, a hundred times more successful when I hit college. Sure. You know I, mean? I was still in college and I'm like, eh, I'm still goofing around, you know, I mean, not taking it seriously. Yeah, maybe because you would have seen that as a career option mm-hmm. instead of it, like, you know, exactly. You're supposed to go work yeah, a shit yeah. job and for the rest of your life and then fucking die. Well, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And the other thing too, with those mentors too, they have connections in that world because they've been around for a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, it's the same thing that happens in the brewing industry. So you get this, you get this person that, that has a mentor and he's teaching you from, you know, age 14 up. And then they're like, Hey, uh, we're going to do an art show with your, with your stuff. I have my colleagues and, you know, we're pretty high up. So we're going to, we're going to showcase your stuff and give you kind of like a, a rocket launch type of thing. And that's how that, that culture was, was birthed. I, I feel like, and now it's just not, it's not existent. Like you have to seek out a mentor rather than the mentor being like, you have talent. We're going to yeah, use you. Yeah. Right. Well, that that's the crazy part. And that actually kind of leads into his after as like middle, middle twenties type thing is sure. that, I mean, that's what kind of led into him being so big, like so quickly, like we were talking about uh, his very first art show. Oh, uh, before about- we go there, oh, one, okay. one thing I did see is that one of his artists actually gave him like an allowance to live off of so that his family wasn't so dependent between, I think for That's like right. five years too, between like 15 and 20. Yeah. Like higher up artists were giving him an allowance, so yeah, he didn't that, have to work for his family. That's because so that of the school like, that he was going to have funding for that, though, right? Because they were part of his. No, they were just helping cover. His this was also expenses. he also had a private. Like, yeah, I think it was that guy that was helping him out from Harvard that he met. That's was, pretty awesome. Yeah. So. Nope. Never mind that. Rude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I what is I it? Turned it off. TikTok. No, it's not TikTok. <laughs> it's a phone call. <laughs> 
I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so keep talking. Just keep talking. Yeah. With that, the, his I mean, first that major art show. First major art show ends up being at the MoMA in New York City. Americans, at, 1942. At 28 years old. Uh huh. And I mean, and that probably helps completely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Having these benefactors, having people in the art world. But I mean, what 28 year old just walks in and has their first like gallery show yeah, at yeah. the fucking MoMA? Yeah. In New York. Your first serious headlining show, you end up selling artwork to like the permanent collection of one of the yeah. most major books. What, what did you say? It was like two. I think like the MoMA bought two pieces from them for their permanent collection. The permanent collection. And that's like his first show. Yeah. Very first show, like major show. And I, I think actually like real gallery mm-hmm. show. And not only that, uh, he was then had a whole big write up in the uh, New York Times about yeah, it. Yeah. So, I mean, there was a whole critique of his work and everything like that. So, I mean, his, the, his, the biggest thing is with connections. Off. I mean, it's the same thing that goes on right now with business and stuff that you're in. It's just all the connections you have. I mean, like he's 20 years old and he's, he has that show. 28. 28. And he has yeah. that show. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, all the people that are around him. too. I mean, it's. And it was like that show where de Kooning and Pollock sort of discovered his work, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were like attendees there. And then that's, yep, that's when from they there, they started to become big fans of his work. Yeah. They were uh, pretty envious of his style from what I understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. De Kooning's wife wrote for Art News at the time, had a big write up on him in there too. Is this Not the same wife that was like banging dudes? Yeah. So they could sell paintings. I, yeah. I for <laughs> yeah. That, that one. <laughs> Just we, to further we, his career. We can throw that in. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll throw that in. But yeah, so I mean, at that point, he was, uh, his career kind of took off. So after that, what, what did that lead into for him, Reggie? Are we getting into the LSD stuff yet? That's, that's later that's, on. That was a little bit. That wasn't too much later. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, that was like I thought that was little, in the fifties. Yeah. I thought that was I mean, late fifties. Like the name of that 50s. show was Americans Forty Two. Yeah. So he had a few shows after that, but I don't. And they were made like they were major shows, but it was every couple of years type. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And he started to gain just a lot of notoriety. Like a lot of people were kind of just playing it up. He's the Pollock and De Kooning refer to him as the first American abstract expressionist. Yeah. So like, I heard, yeah, I heard he resented that. that. Oh, like, completely. Yeah. What but, I think it's kind of baller about this guy is he like started on such a high note and then yeah. just kind of went eh, to like most all the other stuff. It's like, Oh, you're like, you're this. And yeah. it's just like, eh, and they're like, you should go to New York and like do all this stuff. And he's like, eh. yeah, I fucking love this guy because it, <laughs> it, it feels like the reason he wasn't like put on that pedestal with like Pollock and Cooning and those guys is because he just didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he didn't give a fuck about self promotion or yeah. anything. He's just well, like, I, mean, I just a- want to do my art. It's like I, the, there's a documentary about him called Hyman Bloom, the beauty of all things. That's the one I was trying to find. So we oh, could watch yeah, before yeah. we film this, but I couldn't find it anywhere besides like Vimeo. And it was in like mm-hmm. uh, subtitled or some shit. Um, but like there's a, a trailer that I saw for it where they were showing like his studio, like they went to visit him there or some stuff when he was still alive and all his paintings are facing the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Like right. you, you couldn't go to a studio and see work that he was had in progress or anything like that. He didn't well, basically, he did that because he didn't want anyone else's influence on his artwork. Well, not only that, but I mean, this is jumping ahead like 50 years, but oh, whatever, but his wife, uh, cause later on after he died, was talking about him and they, they were saying that he would work on a painting for like a hundred hours mm-hmm. and then just be like, meh, throw it in the closet, sit on it for two years and then pull yeah, it out and yeah, be like, yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah. you can, you can look at it to, uh, you're looking at Kooning and Pollock and, and Hyman and the same thing. I mean, both of those two guys, they saw massive success in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And they were at all those like big uh, shows in New York city and all that stuff where, Bloom, I mean, what was he? Was he? What was he doing? He wasn't in the like social elite. No, not so at all. I mean, it it it's a give and take. Either you want to be that that person that markets themselves, or like Kooning's wife, who's fucking dudes. Well, that's you, also you want to. That's be also up my there. example of yeah. He was a good boy. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. true. He, yeah. he wasn't going out at these like. I mean, if you also talk about like the sixties and seventies, like Andy Warhol throwing these sure. crazy parties and mm-hmm, all that, like mm-hmm. he wasn't going out and joining those. You know, he wasn't a part of that whole scene. His artwork was part of it, but he wasn't like showing up to these social circles. Yeah. Yeah. I think th- from the 40s to the 50s, he was mm-hmm. got offered a lot of work. Like, I think a lot of government services wanted to ha- sort of have him on payroll. 
but well, just to like, oh, make it for office buildings or mm-hmm. stuff around the Boston area. Since he kind of like, but then, well, it didn't go very far because he couldn't hit deadlines. Because like you said, <laughs> he would turn a painting away, walk away from it, and then never come back. So all this great yeah. money that he was supposed to get for making like public installations or office building stuff that never really panned that, out for him because he couldn't. Does that shit still happen? Where they, where people will. Uh, government workers would be like, hey, we're going to hire this artist to do a bunch of different works throughout the facility. Does that stuff still work in, in this day and age? I mean, would they? It, it's a lot less of like fine artists, more, right. more towards like a graphic designer. Right. But like they'll keep stuff. a graphic designer on retainer because they'll just, they'll just send them an email and be like, hey, I need five poster designs by Friday. Right. That, that sort of shit. And then they won't hear from them for four months. I feel like it happens more in like private companies now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So like a law firm. Would hire you. Well, even like big, Silicon biggest one, Valley. Like biggest one is Facebook. Yeah, David Cho is the guy, right? Yep, David Cho. Yeah, uh, he's actually up until like three years ago, he's one of the highest paid living artists. So they oh, they be, contact you and they. Do you say, know why he's one of the highest paid living artists though? So basically, he got hired. my wife gave a guy a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he got hired. He was a graf- Mark Zuckerberg. So David. We'll go off on a slight <laughs> tangent here. Go off on a slight tangent. David Cho um, was a graphic designer that had been fired from probably like 40 different jobs yeah. because he kept pouring in his desk and just would jerk off all the time, I guess. <laughs> nice. And just kept getting fired. Like he couldn't keep a job. And then he would go out and do graffiti and stuff on the weekends and would start doing like posting shit and everything online on like message boards and stuff. And Mark Zuckerberg saw this work back in 2005, I think, when they were building their first actual like warehouse and brought him in was like, yo, if I pay you like 50 grand, will you do like five or six murals for me? And he's like, how about instead you give me 50,000 stock in stock? Shares in the company. shares. Oh, in so the that's, and this that's was where his, this was yeah. like before Facebook went public, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Damn. So smart move. Yeah. The moment dude. it went public, he turned around, sold it all for it was close to like a hundred and forty million or something stupid like that. Damn. And for Killed the longest it. time, he was the the like highest paid living artist because of that. Cool. Yeah, yeah. dude. Right on. And these murals don't even exist anymore. Like the building was torn down like nine months later. <laughs> that's yeah. gangster as fuck dude yeah <laughs> but get, slight tangent get it playboy yeah 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 we should talk about that at some point just focus on all the details of that story yeah we'll go into him more <laughs> yeah should we look at some of this guy's yeah, artwork let's pull yeah, let's a piece. Up. yeah the all right. hymen bloom so this is a uh, self-portrait uh, so nice. this this That's is the title, this anyway. is the reason why he hated the term abstract expressionism because by no means is, is this abstract. It yeah it is expressionistic. It's very uh, as you said you liked the word when I used chunky. It's very, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it to me that's what expressionism there's elements is. of abstract painting in here though for sure. But it's not like there's still form. It's not just fucking brush strokes. Just you know splatter what paint and yeah. There's there's definitely. Like you can definitely make out each brush stroke. I mean, that's why I person. like this guy's stuff. Yeah, way more than the other guys <laughs> so, we talked about. Because it's death. <laughs> when it's we dope. when we're looking at this Bones and we're like and two feet away from this, you can definitely tell each individual brush stroke, which is my favorite form. Like when I'm painting, I'm doing this type of thing, where it's like you can tell each individual brush stroke that he's taking. Yeah. There's nothing that's matted down. There's nothing that's like just to make like a uh, like Refined what you paint. There's blended. nothing that's like. Refined. It's just very each Expression, stroke. It's expressionist. Yes. You know? Yes. One and done. It's nice. I mean, look at this. Look at the the colors: the red, the purple, the violet, the white. I have to say, as a tattooer, I'm gonna shout out. Uh, well, one is no longer with us. Jed Likeness, who oh. definitely painted like this. Should we drink to that? that yeah, guy? we should yeah. because he was a fucking titan. Dude is amazing. But him. Like, if you look at his artwork, you would definitely see a connection between this type of work and, uh, yeah. Huge influence, You know, when I, when I saw these pieces, I pegged them at way earlier. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Because it was a large practice in the Renaissance to, like, go to the morgue and just hang out and paint. That's, yeah, that's, but, that's what he Yeah, was, he didn't he 
some weird existential crisis where he kind of worked out his relationship with death through these types of paintings. Yeah, yeah. That, that's basically what started in the 50s is he would just uh, start going and hanging out at the morgue. Yeah, one buddy was shooting photos for a reference and then he was like, oh, I kind of like this and yeah. like hung out and just kept yeah. going. <laughs> just kept partying it up in there. Yeah. yeah. The, the other artist I was going to shout out too that's uh, still with us is Chris Dingwell. I don't know if you've ever seen his paintings before, mm -hmm. but this is, uh, he's a tattooer and uh, educator in that field, but his paintings look a lot like this. Nice. Very expressive brush strokes. Yeah. I'll have to take a look at his stuff. Yeah. Like what, with, with this piece specifically and talking about abstract, like you, I can see where people call abstract expressionism because you can make out the form of the body, but you can't make out anything else. I yeah, mean, I, you, I think if you don't understand the context that he like, like what we just said, where he was sort of working out his own relationship with mortality sure. through painting these corpses and dead imagery. Like if, knowing this, that's exactly what I see. I see somebody who looked like they just got split down the middle. Right. And you just are slowly starting to see the rib cage come out. This is like some out, death you know metal I mean? album art right here, you know? Yeah, there's like an eyeball hanging off the way sure. from being a camel. And some of the out. other ones that we're going to get into are way more death metal. <laughs> way more, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have yeah. a title for this one? Uh, it's Self-Portrait. Self -portrait. Okay. When, yeah. when was this? For painted? anybody going it? audio only, this is called Self-Portrait. Um, I'm not sure what year this was painted. This is just one oh. of the ones that I found online. Probably sometime in the 50s, right? Isn't that when he yeah. went through his? Mostly. Well, it had to be. Yeah, Cause like that, cause that later, in, later he did like stuff like seascapes and shit like that. Well, not only that, but from I think it was 1960 or 1961 to 1970, he just didn't paint. He stopped painting altogether. Or did he not tell people he wasn't painting? He, he was just what? drawing. Oh, really? Yeah, like, guys, was, I need a break. He literally just put away paintbrushes altogether, didn't yeah. paint at all. We uh, we saw his, when we were in Boston, too, they had all of his sketchbooks uh -huh. opened up. You can see all of that. There's a painting, and then there's a drawing that we're going to see coming up that we saw in the sketchbooks that he had. He had, um, and then he went when he went back to painting after his sketchbooks. You could definitely see the works that he had in his sketchbooks. So he was like, "All right, I'm going to transfer this over to painting." Right. So he's just doing thumbnails. Basically. Yeah. Well, that that's the really cool part is right now that that show that's going on. Like he he died. I think it's actually cool. over now by the time this comes out because it was till like the end of February or something sure. like yeah. that. But. but but he died in 2009. So yeah. they, they put together this show at the in Boston for him, a uh, ten year retrospective. Yeah, well, I was looking on a YouTube. I think I found a local Boston news company that had like a five minute write up on it, and that yeah. was pretty interesting. Yeah, so they did I, a ten year retrospective for him that started over the summer, and basically it hosted like the seventy. It's pretty cool works. that you got to see that. Yeah, yeah, I was happy with it. I got, I guess I didn't really realize what we were looking at until right later. So, you know, yeah. So as a fan yeah. of de Kooning, did you know who Hyman was? Kind of I never his? knew. I didn't know anything I mean, about I didn't him. either. It's literally like right. one of those things you saw. You're like, well, Holy we don't, shit. we didn't hey, what's go down here? that expressionist <laughs> right. rabbit hole uh, like, I was just curious. His artwork is like, definitely something that I would have fucking been all about. Like just yeah. seeing yeah, it. Yeah, I, I loved know? it. Like when I was up there, I was like, this guy's fucking sweet. Everything yeah. about his work was awesome. I have to say that that is actually one of my complaints about <clears throat> like modern museums is the fact that like now you went home and you started researching it like you didn't you just said you didn't even know or mm -hmm. kind of appreciate it at to, to the full extent no. of what you were seeing you know of the entire retrospective of this person's life you know yeah you'd yeah, think you'd, that would like be on that title card right next to like the first painting on his display yeah, like exactly. oh jack Pollock called him the first and well this is well you know yeah, they're not going to do that I mean. the, or like just even call the curators it, aren't going to do that the people just, that are in the rooms right but to even refer to it as like hyman bloom a retrospective of his life yeah you, you know what i mean like that i didn't when i looked it up i didn't see any information about that it was just i'm in bloom look at us attacking the art museums <laughs> that's what we do here zach we're no i, I we're, like, that, that wasn't an attack yeah. Come on, that was pretty mild man that was pretty mild yeah. no but when we were up there i just i fell in love with all the shit that he had i was like wow this is exactly the type of stuff that i would uh paint this yeah, type of look i think dead like a, a lot of the reason that we well not don't. dead bodies the style the style of what he had. Right. I have no well, reason to paint I, well, dead bodies. Well, I said dead bodies and dicks. Oh, well, the dicks, yes. Okay. I'd paint dicks. I think okay. a lot of the reason why we don't know much of his work is just because of the way he didn't yeah. promote himself. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just didn't give That's a fuck. Too, you know? yeah. He's right. not trying, he's not painting to sell paintings. He's painting for himself. Right. What Which is fuck, kind yeah. of a G move, dude. Yeah, that is fucking And everybody is telling you, like, you got to move to New York. You got to go. Well, he was in Boston. I yeah, mean, he stayed in Boston. They're like, I don't give a shit about the artwork. Fuck that. I just want to explore this myself. And if people like it, they fucking like it. Now, the Whatever. question I have behind this, how much money his parents had? 
Like how much money does parents have to have them be able to do this on to the side? To escape a war-torn country to move to the United that, States? That says money. It wasn't well, quite ripped apart yet because so it was the 20s. That says we're money. The cusp of like, I, see, I don't, I don't know what was really, going on in Latvia in the 20s. Though. Yeah, yeah. That, that doesn't really say, say money necessarily. It's not super expensive to get a boat ride at that sure. point. I mean, there was... But, well, I mean, you're relocating to a different fucking country, though. So I don't know what it true. was like back then. I mean, it's the same thing like when you talk about people from China that not the coronavirus we're talking about now. But <laughs> when, when you talk about people that can are able to get out of China or send their kids from China to America to go to school, you're talking about they have money. They definitely have to have money. Right. That That's nowadays, though. Sure. You're, you're talking about school. You're talking about jobs. You're talking about a resume. You know what I mean? You're, you're talking 1920s. They roll into town. And the dad's like, yeah, I know how to make this. I know how to fix your picket fence. Right. I, I, I think I read something that they sent the older brothers over here first to get established. Oh, that's fair. And then I yeah, think they kind of trimmed off a few things off their names so they could blend in a little better. And then they bloomed it as opposed to. <laughs> I see what you did there. Ah, you bloomed it. All right. So let's get back to this guy's right. artwork. So we saw See, that. Yeah, we saw this one. So Ooh, this is a this job is for a cowboy too. album art. That's what it looks <laughs> like right now. Yeah. I this, love it. We saw this live, too. This was sweet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, this one is Cadaver on the Table from 1963. How big would you for, say these paintings are, Zach? For them saying that's expression. Uh, I would probably say 30 by 40 or, or above. So very big. good, good size paintings. Yeah. There was nothing small, like 18 by 24. Everything was pretty fucking We can fucking zoom massive. in a little bit here. Yeah, you can see all the brush strokes here. Yeah. It's, I it's can, like but they, they hit the form so well. Beautiful. It is so... But look at that. rendered out real well. Go to in the middle, where the white, where all the white brush strokes, the white right and gray brush strokes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's just one stroke. I mean, he's taking yeah. one brush stroke, and that's it. Like, with the that curly cue that he has there, and the other, it's cool. one stroke yeah. and leaving it. Some nice heavy yeah. impasto there. It's a good technique. Go down that, a little that bit. Is you one, can see it here, like over the like thinner, so transparent colors. Yeah, back. go that back is, down to that the, is uh, one thing I've always jaw. like that stroke. Like you can see the colors get yeah. blended just as like, like one. You know, that's one thing that Fucking I've always right enjoyed on. about artists like this. Not the abstract, but just more expressionist. I, kind of jealous of just the confidence. Yeah, like to the leave balls. Just, yeah, just, you know, and just be like, yeah, make a works. stroke and leave that's, it and walk that's away. That's all I need. It might be wrong, but fuck it. I don't care. I think with my dude. I paint something like fifteen hundred <laughs> times, and I'm still like, <laughs> yeah. They're you just can even tell it on the fucking whatever that that black thing is there. It looks like the a side. meat hook. It's a fucking meat, meat hook. hook. Meat meat hook. Into this thing. He's it's a, black with white. Just he's a at a white fucking to, butcher shop, just like painting this from life. That's what yeah. it looks like, you know. But that it's just like white with that tiny bit of white brush stroke, and he's not going back over it. You yeah. get each individual brush stroke on that. It's beautiful, for sure. It's a fucking awesome image. I feel like the only thing that he really likes. I feel like vegans is, would hate this one though. Hey, I'm not that offended. Died of natural causes. <laughs> You're not a vegan though. You're not vegan. We don't know any vegans. Should we ask Elliot's opinion? <laughs> oh, uh, Elliot was a vegan up until about four days ago when he decided to eat a Big Mac on the way to work. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Sometimes he's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see what you did there too. Yeah. Oh, no, I like fair. all the, I like the stylized use of color. Like it makes it a little bit brighter and yeah. more vibrant. There's even green in that. Yeah. Like yeah. Just full. Well, like green. yellows, the it's a good, it's yeah. a good counterpart to the, all the reds. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. nice, nice indication of shadow and or gore or rot. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Sick. Ah, oh. the woman. We saw this one too, right? Yep. This we saw this museum. one. Uh, the oh, decaying the woman. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. It looks like I she's gonna... an astronaut, but she's not. <laughs> yeah, it this does kind of look like that. This one's this called Female Corpse. Yeah. This was actually only 1945. Wow. So this is actually a lot earlier than I thought. Uh, he was started going to the morgues. Okay. All right. Yeah. He had a drawing up there. I know we don't have it here, but he had a drawing up there of an old woman that was just fucking decrepit yeah yeah it yeah. looked Dude, really I, uh, really man, depressing just as shit. but she was yeah. still alive it just looked horrible but it captured the true emotion of like death just, it's yeah. just being i remember the one that you're seven years about. old and just yeah just like i'm 97 i'm gonna die fuck just yeah. just put me out of my misery <laughs> give me the jello <laughs> yeah you can tell he's still the, the a lot though <laughs> 
Yeah. He has a glass of Kool Aid. We'll call it. Dude, a day. His, his rotten skin is fucking sweet. Dude, the, te- the texture on that. Yeah. Yeah, you, it seems like you could run your fingers across it, but you wouldn't want to because you might get gangrene. <laughs> <laughs> You'll catch some shit he off had, of that. He had a, a severed foot, a rotting foot up there that was massive. Like a painting of? Yeah, him? it was a painting okay, of a this. severed foot. Dude, I just got nauseous when you zoomed in on that. Yeah, it's in pretty, a good way, though. It's pretty gross. I like it. That's rough. It's not letting me fucking... Not Josh Ruff. Here. And not Josh Ruff. That's rough. Look at the face. Look at the scab on the lip. Oh, oh the, the boil. Dude, she's got the herbs. On she's the got some. <laughs> they got she's the got, head wrapped in something. Yeah, it looks like she's covered in them. It's fucking she's, disgusting. She's got some shit growing on her. The boils. This gets like more cannibal corpse the more we look through it, you know? Sweet. I love it. You could easily use these for any modern death metal album cover. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Or, you know, just like McDonald's advertising. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> ah, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I've got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Herpes. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. One of my yeah, favorites. Here's the male counterpart. You just like it because the dick's in there, the don't penis. you? penis. Yep. This one is Corpse of a Do- Man, 1944. Do- so this was done a year later. Uh-huh. Do we say the penis? I can't zoom in on this one because this is the best quality image I could find. This, this one was as right big right as the other one that was like, I want to say of the same realm of 30 by 40, but it's clearly not 30 by 40. So it's maybe like 20 by 40 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. It's a good size painting. I have yeah. another yeah. photo of it that we can we can throw up there as well. So, okay. yeah, cool. Nice zoom in on the, the dick. There's uh, Circumcised. So all, all of those uh, textures and all those boils and all those. It, it very much is represented on that penis. So corpse of a man with herpes. Yeah. Circumcised. <laughs> Circumcised herpes. Cut. Still bloated. What belly. is all this like drapery around him? Is that his skin? Uh I no, I think that's just like um what they wrap the body in. I mean the same thing around his head too. Yeah. I So these are corpses from from the actual morgue. So what I was thinking it was was like it's almost like if he's you know, if the body was laying on the table and I'm looking at it from above. Sure. So I think it's like partially okay. body bag, partially yeah, yeah. just whatever they, they wrapped them in. The, the cloth cloth was sheet or whatever the hell they pulled them out in. Yeah. All right. Wretched. This is the most abstract piece he has. Well, this is a still life with squashes is the title of this. This is 1955. Right. When he painted this I mean, one. I like it, but I don't see any squash. I do. You can see it off to the bottom right corner. It's a very um, fleshy squash. Yeah. It looks yeah. pussy. <laughs> Butthole. Spell that for us. I can't. <laughs> Butthole. Yeah, he, he kind of kept, kept his uh, P- rotten P- color S-S-S-Y? palette when he's using oh, still yeah, life. You know what I mean? Zoom on there. Maybe this Dude, was, that looks when, like a giant what painting was this, testicle. 1955? Yep. This is probably when he was going through LSD. Yeah, did we talk about that yet? The uh, That looks like a testicle. He did some LSD experiment. <laughs> Does that have any connection to, like, the, the Tim Leary and Ram Dass days at Harvard when sure. they wanted to pull in, like, jazz musicians and artists that's, and feed That's them very acid? interesting, though. Because it's all the same city during yeah. the same time period. Yeah. So Hyman Bloom, somebody uh, fed Hyman Bloom acid in the mid 1950s just to see what Ellis at a, a doctor to see the <laughs> effects on creativity. Which I guess he, I guess he would be a decent litmus since he, he was kind of generally a good old boy. Since he wasn't partying his face off, they'd be like, "Okay, let's see what a little psychedelic grows." Let's see how much he actually fuck said. This guy up. He said it was a, mo- a really eye opening experience from when he when he took the LSD and was painting. So. Hmm. Oh, it's definitely a very eye-opening experience, <laughs> even if you're not painting. <laughs> I'll <just> say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was that face for, Zach? Uh, just got to drink some beer. Relief. Just got to drink some beer. <laughs> <sighs> By the way, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, very impressed. Uh, Supreme Rain. Okay. I mean, by the time this comes out, are we going to... There won't be any more of it. We'll be sold out. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have other rains. I you mean, guys should know it was really good, though. Yeah, we'll have other rains. That, that's uh, actually part of the plus of the North, is that you make one and it's done. It's done. We'll bring it back, maybe. 
Maybe. If too many people like, like it, we're never bringing it back. But if if I like it, we'll bring it back. Years from now, though. Years. Yeah. Unless you're one of the state. Yeah. It took, for, it took seven years for us to, to produce American Dream regularly. It took us seven years to produce Cerberus regularly. So Sadly. here we are. Here we are. Sadly. You need to do that. More. Now, why does that happen? Is that just availability of, uh, like, ingredients sometimes? <laughs> or is it just you want to perfect it? Uh... So let's go with a little bit of I want to perfect it, and then uh-huh. also because I'm lazy. <laughs> That's why I started laughing because he gave me that explanation like a I'm, week ago. I'm a I'm a procrastinator, and I'm super fucking lazy. I have a business that's successful. Uh, I run it with two other people, and it's it's successful, but it's also come to the point where like I want to. We're we're starting to crack down more and more, and we're starting to produce uh, beers more regularly instead of new beers all the time. So it's it's mo- it's it's a little bit of both. It's I want to make sure it's perfected correctly, and then I also want to. Uh, I also, just I'm lazy. Like, like, well, oh, we'll be out of lactose. Okay, so we can't produce Cerberus. We'll produce something else without lactose, and then we finally get the lactose in. And we're like, oh man, I've been waiting to produce a milk stout. Well, well let's produce Cerberus because we've been waiting to produce that. I'm like, nah, let's hold off on that. And then that's how it just just happens. You mean, <laughs> seven like, years go seven, by. Seven years go by. <laughs> so and, it's kind of a combination of procrastination and available supplies. Sure. Sure. <laughs> we can go with that. Well, you're doing awesome with it. Thank yeah. you. We try. Yeah. We we enjoy it uh, daily. <laughs> all right. So I'll make sure to touch glasses and get the Corona. <laughs> he doesn't make Corona. <laughs> Thank God. None of us will get sick. We don't drink Corona. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're listening to this, like in maybe the Midwest, you don't have the Corona right now. New York oh, State. Actually, yet. actually, I saw today it popped up St. Louis County. Ooh. I don't know. By the time this airs, we might all be dead. Yeah, St. Louis yeah. County, which does not include St. Louis, Missouri. There's it's no, just west of it. There's no way Corona is going to affect this body, this Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> take your shirt off. I admire I'm your confidence. Just, just take it off. Just, just. <laughs> Just All take right, it off. So anyway, we're, <laughs> we're talking about Hyman Bloom today. Uh, so let's get back to some Dr. Doom. So oh, no, let's, Dr. Doom. let's go. Uh, let's Dr. go to Doom. The, that image. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, this one's sweet. <laughs> Brutal. The hull. Oh, they're just slicing that open. Yep. Yeah. They even got the corner in there or the, so somebody slicing the body can, open. Can you there. zoom in at all? Let's see here. Zoom yes. in. Yes. Down Not a little bit. Much. Is that the butthole? No. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. Is, is that his inverted belly bro? button? <laughs> I see so many buttholes in this guy's painting. Well, did that used to be his dick? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. What does your dick look like from the inside? It looks like his fucking <laughs> skin suit is just stretched over everything here. It's yeah, he chopped open already. The face. Mike Myers is not yes. having a good yeah, time. Yeah, it looks it like Mike looks Myers. Like so I was going to make that too. <laughs> the one time Mike Myers dies. It's, it's, uh. See, I thought that looked like William Shatner. It could. I, yeah. I mean. <laughs> It's an abstract expressionist painting. It could look you, like you get whatever you want it. You get that joke, right? Allegedly. You Allegedly. get that joke, right? Yeah. The, the very first. You get that uh, joke, right? Uh, it's just over our heads. <laughs> <laughs> or we ignored it. <laughs> uh, yeah, the ribcage is fucking sweet, dude. dude yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm not trying to. Pay attention to me. <laughs> Pay attention to me! Oh, just yeah. a mound of gross flesh. Yeah, it's so metal. I love it. Especially with a knife with a little blood on it. Uh-huh. Just yeah. slicing it open. The shadow on the gloves. The shadow on the face. Darkness. Yeah, I mean, he's got some good elements of realism in here, you know? But he's just doing it in a very abstract manner. It's a lot of good, uh, you know, there's a light source and stuff like that. And a lot of highlights and shadows. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. Colors. Yeah. Well, yeah, his realism is pretty on point. Like yeah. his teachers said they came from a really academic background and they thought it was super important that like it's good to learn. They were like embedded in the artistic tradition that it's really good to learn how to copy and or paint what you see, but it's more important yeah, to like to draw from imagination. Yeah. yeah, I remember reading that about his instructors. They kind of put that in his head really young. Was like you got to have a voice. Yeah. You know? yeah. Teach him the you fundamentals, but push a little, little harder, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't just like 
always draw from life. There has to be a little bit that comes from your imagination yeah, to really yeah. make it yours. And cool. you can definitely see that in all his fucking work. That's what I love about his work. Like, is it, even though it's so realistic, like there's no question what that is. Yeah. It's a fucking dude that's shot. Dude, that <laughs> rubber glove. Fuck, man. It's a. Yeah. You see that nice highlight going down his hand, oh, yeah. the underlying shadow. Yeah. Even like just, the rim lighting, how like rubber. Shiny. Rubber fucking has yeah, that. Yeah, that's you know definitely I mean? one of those like fucking, you know, gloves you wash dishes in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. like modern surgical gloves at all. If they used gloves. I'm pretty sure they would just to not get fucking covered in blood when they're doing shit like yeah. this. It's got to stink. In the 40s, oh, yeah, yeah, but like 20 years earlier, they weren't even using gloves. No. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Bloodborne pathogens. What's that? <laughs> Blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's go to the next one. This is a, a little different for him. I'm oh, not sure Christmas when this tree, was. Oh, Christmas tree. But yeah, it's a very abstract uh, representation of a Christmas tree. This is, uh, can, yeah, I can kind of see like other influences affecting his work here. This one's definitely a little bit more abstract. Yeah. yeah. The, the brightness. But again, his brush strokes shines through. You can see that on the work. Just kind of like a shit cone. Yeah. But. There's a lot there. <laughs> I bet you this is pretty fucking massive. Yeah. I can still even just make out the form of a Christmas tree, though. So like, of course you can. That's what I said, shit you know? cone. <laughs> you can see the bulbs, the wiring. Looks like a tamale there. <laughs> yeah, Isn't that, the I think it's a sock. Didn't he have like four main or three main visual tropes that he would go back to was like the cadavers and like the butcher shop stuff. Yeah. And then rabbis, he just for some reason always, I don't think he displayed them a lot, but he always would make paintings of rabbis and yep. then Christmas trees. Yeah, he loved, Interesting. Mm -hmm. He loved Christmas for somebody who was, was Jewish. Jewish. Do you think it's like an rabbi. outsider perspective on like American culture? Be like, oh, this maybe. Is really interesting. You know what maybe, I mean? Maybe, yeah. You guys are weird. I'm going to make your weird trees. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want that who Christmas. The, who the fuck cuts down a tree and puts it in their living room? It's like a ball of just fun. It's nice. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. The cadavers. Oh, man. Is that a Get brain? in there. Dude, they ripped the skin off that dude's arm. Get in there nice and deep, like. Is he as wearing gloves? We switch to this. I just like heard a metal riff in my head. You know, like. Let's open this fucking pit. Yeah. <laughs> and that metal tray. Do, do you just hear like a yeah. pig squeal? Just. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's right. just gore. It's fucking great. It's Bam! Great. Is he wearing gloves? Nope. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Yeah. He is not wearing gloves. Is that his face? Do they rip his face off or are they ripping like his back his brain. skin off? Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Because there's if like that's a, his back, that's his hand like this. Oh, so I that see. That must be like the I see back the nose. side. I yeah, see a nose. There's like a little bit of a face right there. Yeah. That's, that. yeah that's a that's nose. That's his brain. Okay. Yeah. So that's his brain that's exposed. I thought he was like laying face down with his one arm. Yeah. I thought so at first, but I feel like whoever whoever's doing this, like, post-mortem fucking autopsy or whatever this is like had they're really no bad at it they had no clue what they were doing they were just like let's shave their skin off but let's zoom in on the this hand. guy up Zo zoom in on that hand it does look like the way up reggie here? was explaining it yeah oh, oh maybe sweet. it's like this it looks like this yeah it's definitely no because those it brush strokes though side. yeah it's it would have been on that yeah. side so it would have been yeah. that that's, that's like true that's palm up those brush strokes though yeah fucking beautiful i do really like this technique that he's using here because yeah. it's all just like transparent colors underneath and then all these opaque highlights on top yeah yeah like i don't mean to keep repeating it but the, the confidence yeah it's beautiful oh. dude well where we were just zoomed in you could see that like two to again that two-tone brush stroke put I one know. corner in one color and the other corner in another color and go Wah! and then you're done just whoop. it's enough to highlight everything it's beautiful it's yeah. just whoop. it's He's just going. But look at that orange and blue. Like yep. what's orange and white with a little blue in there. It's just so nice. Ah, oh, I get off on that. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah he does. Well, this hide, just got weird. He does hide like really good 
secondary color or like yeah. contrasting colors in there. Because if you stand like those back, weird cool greens that are almost or like yeah, it's almost yeah. like outlining the body oh, yeah. in that direction. And then if you stand back and look at his paintings, you don't notice it until you walk up yeah, and you're like, yeah. oh my god, it's one fucking brushstroke on top of everything else. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, because from from a distance, it's like, oh, he spent a lot of time in those nice color blends and everything. And then you get in close and you're like, uh, uh. you see like the brush hairs. <laughs> in it. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's thing. always a trippy thing about paintings. Is like if you look at them up close, they look way different than far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just those hog bristles. Just yeah. yeah, that hog, that hog hair. <sighs> Yeah, because you could get like right up on this painting, and it probably looks like fucking nothing if you just zoom in. Yeah. You know, I'm zoom in. Yeah, enough. pick a random yeah. area and zoom in, and just yeah. see that it, doesn't. It just looks like a, a mess, you know. But like when you look at it from far away, it's nice. you're like, you "Yep, it that's is. a dead body." Yeah, <laughs> something. The intestines just a pile of skin, out of his man. Stomach. Nice gloves. It's fucking rad. Yeah, I think that's all we got. There might be one more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, one of the drawings. So this, this, was a, this was a sketch that you saw, right? So this was a sketch uh, in a small book, and then he had a massive one that he did a sketch, Charcoal, which is the one we're seeing here. Then he had a painted version of this as well. Right. That She's pretty. So this was like his study for the actual painting. Sure. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, you can see like a lot of elements of classical drawing here. Because uh, from what I remember reading, like a lot of his influences were like Renaissance artists from like the the German Renaissance. I think there was uh, some artists there and then Caravaggio and Rembrandt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is very, very classical drawing. With death. Yeah. With death. That's what's awesome. <laughs> it's a supple yeah, breast, his... but with death. <laughs> Are we doing like, yeah, I mean, check out that titty. That's a, that's a nice titty. It is nice. <laughs> He articulated the form of the tit really well, too. Nice round. But then she's I mean, cut in half. Big, yeah, I mean, her whole torso is just fucking nipple. emptied. <laughs> I mean, big nipple, though. Yeah, you think she'd survive this? You blow on it a little nah. bit, make it get small. Go. <laughs> it's a flesh wound. <laughs> Tis a <laughs> flesh wound. This oh, you're saying just fucking, a little, not just... <laughs> even as a study, this is fucking awesome. Though. Yeah. That's a study? Yeah, because he has a painting of it in Boston, too. <sighs> yeah. Charcoal on toned paper, I'm going to guess. No, there might be some oil. It might be like a yeah, combination think... of pencil and oil or something like that. I was going to. OK. Yeah. Do you see variants in the brown? I was just caressing that because of the. <coughs> nice. It looks like um, nice. this looks like an underpainting to me. Like he started with like a sketch and then did uh, like a burnt umber over burnt top umber of everything rub with like some cheese cloth but there's also or yeah it's it's strange because in no, some areas some it seems like the white is coming yeah. on top but in other it seems like the charcoal strokes are on top of it yeah i mean yeah it's hard to tell really because it looks like there might be some over whatever it is it's fucking cool yeah. yeah and it's fucking the, rad the fact that you were like this is a study that's still better than my finished <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's awesome but yeah. Um, so Bloom died in 2009, right? Yeah, yeah, 2009. 11 years ago. He died. He Cheers died. to Bloom, though. All Let's right, get so drunk. follow-up question. Would you rather drink, smoke, or do drugs, or stay the fuck away from with this guy? Bloom seems like a kind of interesting guy just to more casually hang out and pick his brain. Ooh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just hey, do. man, so why didn't you move to New York? He's like, let me tell you about fucking New York, dude. <laughs> like, you wouldn't have to party with him to get him to go on that fucking tire. Wait, yeah. is this a new thing you guys are doing? Yeah. Well, it's okay. just a general so, question yeah. at the end of so, when we was find it due to G? Did it seem wholesome? Would yeah. you want to party with him? He seemed like a very wholesome boy, I would say. Yeah. You know? So drink, smoke some weed with, do some hardcore drugs with. Or is he so crazy you just stay the fuck away from him? Uh, I would drink and do weed with him. Uh, that's probably the further. I, I would hang out with him. I would I do all. I want to do some weed. Yeah, I, I think. Do it would, some weed. <laughs> One pot, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it would be just just enjoy a beer with him. Yeah, hang out. Sure. Just, yeah, pick just his get, brain. Man. Yeah, exactly. It would be way. It would be very relaxed. I feel like it'd be really hard to pick his brain, though, because of like the studio visit that they had in that documentary where all his paintings just turned around. Like he doesn't want any insight on any of his art. I, mean, I don't even have to really see his work, but just, right. just talk to him. Just be like, Hey, I'd you, ask him the, the hard ass that doesn't want your opinion might be pretty strong minded to give you their opinion. Yeah, yeah that's, true. I mean? that's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. I might ask him to paint with like side by side with him. 
and say, hey, let's just, I know you don't want to show me your work. What if we did something side see, by side? See, I feel like you just take drink. your pants off and be like, can you paint me? <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> I got this growth. I need you to, I need you to. Oh, what is this boil? You're good at this. <laughs> I saw this in a couple of paintings of yours. <laughs> so uh, on a side note, we just got. We got to make sure the last episode I was on with Bahari. He has a uh, an event coming up. Oh, he does. His last. I thought we were going to tell. Josh. Oh fuck! You just ruined this. No, spill no, the beans. Right. I, I want to go. Beans. I spill the beans. Oh yeah, I want to yeah. go. We were going to surprise you and just take you. Okay. Yeah. He's well, retiring. Yeah. All right. He's got a show. From painting or just from being from a professor? Be- <laughs> <laughs> from life. Just so life. <laughs> we'll go up there. I think it's in the next two weeks. I'll find a date. Be and we'll okay. go up there to be you, and we'll do a live little sh- little setup there. Yeah, we can. We yeah. Just bring the stuff just, with us. Yeah. yeah, do it in the car. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that'll be good. We have throw, the technology to do throw that. Throw some that'd GoPros on. We have the technology. Yeah. Throw some GoPros and drink in the car like a ratchet bunch of fucks. <laughs> <laughs> if we do that, it needs to be straight 40s. Like, we can't drink the good stuff. Yeah, it has to be we, horrible shit. Yeah. It's just That's OE. fine. We could do that. I mean, <laughs> and the only reason it's OE is because Big Bear doesn't exist anymore. Oh, Pabst took Big Bear out the market? Rest in peace, Big Bear. Oh, oh I'll drink you, Big Bear. Uh, Rest in peace. Rest in peace to my 20s. <sighs> So you don't know when this is happening, though. Just within the next couple. I'm going to find out right now. Okay. Yeah. See, we were. I would love to go to that. Well, that's the thing is, we were going to surprise. Even if I'm going to hate it, we were going (laughs) to surprise you and just not tell you what it was, and then take you. Hey, Josh, they're going to the permanent collection at BU. Oh, that sounds like a good time. (laughs) And then wait, what is this bullshit? Yeah, we're just (laughs) going to we're going to film your reaction of just like what the fuck. Did you guys invite my kid up here? Because it looks like they pay that shit. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Dude, it can't $11, be. $11,000, I'll give you 12 bucks. It can't be any worse than some of the shit that happens on First Friday in Binghamton down there. Because there's some pretty fucking we, ridiculous we, shit. We should there. start going to that and doing, we should. Some, yeah. doing some live recordings. Yeah. So Christina came up with the great idea. I was like, you know, we, we should record while driving there. Uh-huh. And so we'll we'll throw on the GoPros in the car and we'll all just be hanging out and everything. And I was like, yeah, and what would we do for mics? And you had the great idea of let's just bring these with us. Yeah, we can. And I was like, well, you what about out. I was like, what about the person driving? So Christina's idea was just take this and just duct tape it to my chest. <laughs> and I just have to talk like this the entire time while <laughs> driving the car. <laughs> you can make it work. All right, I gotta find this information out. I'll have the information. Yeah, we don't have more. to figure it out now. Okay, I'm definitely yeah. down to go there. Cool. And see what's up. Just I would love Bahari to be there too, just to walk you. <laughs> this hey, is garbage. We did an episode about you, and I just totally ripped your shit up. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Derivative. <laughs> Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> I think this is uh. a good episode. Yeah. Was, was it a fun. good episode? Leave a comment below. Like, yeah. follow, subscribe, subscribe and share. Yeah. I know we're not predator poachers, but by the way, <laughs> uh, I I have the email. Send me hate mail. Yeah, I love for sure. it. If if you like Send this, all hate if mail. you like this, comment. If you, you think we're stupid, just you know, let us know. I, I if love this guy needs to shut his mouth more. Just let us know. Yeah, I want to hear all this. Stop stuff. pulling knives. I mean, if you send just, stuff but in, that's like the best part. It's pretty. You good. You love it. It's pretty good. You try to egg me on to pull more stuff. You're like, yeah, are you sure you don't want to pull out some ninja stars? <laughs> I do have some ninja stars somewhere floating <laughs> around, so we should probably bring those out at some point. Somebody's going to lose an eye here. That's what I oh, see happening. I hope so. It's going to be like that episode of South Park with the fucking oh. chin poke. Come fuck you, no, bro. Yeah. Come yeah. fuck you, bro. Butters gets a star in his yeah, eye. Yeah, he gets a ninja hey, star in his face. You don't break my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right, guys. So I think that Thank wraps you it up for, for Hyman joining Bloom. joining us. Thank you, guys. For, Thank you for having Doom. me. We're out. Hyman Bloom. It was amazing. Damage by you. Damage by me. I took you. Cut you. Don't want to be with you. We're still recording.